quite rapidly you'll see after a rain event you'll see water flooding off these fells. With many many years of grazing in the uplands we've seen compaction of soils, there's no percolation of water into the soil and that rain and water will run off within a very short space of time. From raining on the top of the summit here it'll be in the becks and when it hits the becks it's probably got lots of soil in it and sediment and when it hits the rivers that's when you start to get the negative effects of soil and sediment build up in rivers and effectively you're losing your soils, you're losing your land to the sea, that's where it's going. You can see the, um, the large erosion that we have on the right hand bank there. Now this, three years ago, this erosion wasn't there. That land there is really valuable grazing land for the farmers. cheaper methods you know for stabilizing the rivers is that you're actually fencing keeping the stock out you see you start to get all the reeds growing down the sides here which then trap the silt which narrows the river in. Three years ago I would have been standing in a river next to a, a river bank that was eroding really actively we stopped the erosion in this particular part of the river by using large spruce logs at the bottom of the erosion and then we used regeneration conifers attached onto the log, it traps silt and debris that's coming down the river, it drops out in this position and then you have materials gathering and then vegetating in the same area. This is a really good method of, of, of soft engineering that helps protect the riverbanks. We're a 400 acre farm in, in the Lake District uh, and this four hectare field we planted up with uh, trees uh, three years ago now. Uh, the field itself um, certainly wasn't the most productive field we have and is our lowest lying field with several fields running off and draining into this area. So stabilising the ground to prevent erosion was obviously quite important. From a, a productivity point of view and a crop, then they're really quite valuable. Uh, we all know that wood fuel is becoming a big thing now. As well as having this, this uh, wildlife benefit, this water quality benefit, we've actually got a cash crop at the end of the day. We started planting these trees between five and seven years ago. Uh, we have, we've now got to 135,000 trees. 20% of the range area for our birds is planted with trees. What you tend to find with chicken range is that the, the surface gets very um, solid. You get a pan on the surface, the trees break that up, encourage the drainage so it reduces the runoff. Some of the research that we've been doing with uh, some of the scientific institutions in the UK has proven that you get better production. If you give birds better welfare, more tree cover, they get better production. So economically it's a sensible thing to do from a farming point of view. So all in all, it's, uh, it's a net benefit for everybody. Uh, there's no downsides to, to trees and chickens. It works very well with commercial chicken farming. The advantage of working with partnerships is not only a financial contribution to assist with the tubes and the stakes, but also the provision of manpower and the provision of advice as to what is best to plant, how to plant, where to plant. The good thing about the Woodland Trust and other bodies is you can ring them up and have somebody come and have a site visit with you. The landowners win because they're not losing their valuable ground, it's not getting washed away into the river. The local community win because they're enhancing their local environment. The school children are getting involved planting trees and it's a real community partnership project. So when we look at managing the farm and the estate, we're looking at uh, where we can obviously generate money and revenue because at the end of the day we're, we're farming the land. The land needs to have a, a purpose in its life. So I think you need to look at these projects as a long-term goal. It's not going to happen over two years, it's going to happen over 10, 15 or 20 years. But then again, we're here for a lifetime anyway. It's my land, it's my soil, it's my gravel. Uh, and this has come down from further up and we've caught it so we're no longer losing it. I'm now seeing it, I've actually got it in my hand. It's, it's, it's the land that's come washed down and we've saved it here and, and we're catching it back up again. So that's a real benefit. <laughs>